the issues of jurisdiction. But the, at the end of the day, the question still remains, what next? What happens to parliamentary business? What happens to the many um, urgent issues on the floor of parliament which need to be considered before parliament rises after elections? And, and the, the, the questions are endless. But let me just um, ask you first, um, Prof, what's your general perception of how the matter has unfolded up to this point is? Yeah, thank you. Good morning to our cherished uh, viewers. Um, now, I see this whole thing as a political gimmick. Political gimmick? Political gimmick. And it's so sad and very shameful to us as a country, after having come this far, and we seem to be retrogressing as far as our democracy is concerned. I'm so surprised that in this 21st century, we are now trying to understand our own constitution, a constitution that was written by us and for us. I don't think it was you lawyers that wrote the constitution, and so you need to be a lawyer to understand the constitution. It's so clear, Article 97, Clause 1H, 1G and H, it's so clear under what circumstance one will have to vacate his or her seat in parliament. It's so clear. And when you look at all political parties, as one of the mandates for you to form a political party, you should have a constitution as a requirement for EC. And every political party has a constitution. NDC has a constitution, and the same way NPP has a constitution. In NPP's own constitution, it says that one forfeit his or her seat, once you declare yourself as an independent candidate, or you support an independent candidate. It's so clear. In 2020, they use the same constitution to declare a, a seat vacant. And I'm just wondering why today, in 2024, we are saying that the speaker, Michael Quay, aired in 2020. In 2020, when it was convenient for them, it was okay. Not even the Supreme Court saw anything wrong with it. We all allowed it to pass. Today, shamefully, the people who applauded the then speaker are today saying that the speaker aired. Where were they when the speaker declared that seat vacant? Where were they? And you see, <clears throat> it's so sad when our judicial system seems to be mainly in politics. You see, these are institutions that are our last resort. When everything fails, that is where we go to seek redress. Why are you saying meddling? The, the matter was brought before the court, and that's yes. why the court pronounced on it. It's because of the happening. Now you can more or less predict a case that, you know, the judiciary is yet to sit on. People are able to predict that this case, it will be 5-0, it will be 7-0, it will be 6-0. And it always turned out to be so. Look, yesterday I did not really watch the live coverage. I was just with, I mean, monitoring it on, on platform. And before the pronouncement, there were people who made some predictions, the outcome. And it turned exactly so. Now, I think it's very worrying. And... If you look at the public perception about our judicial system, we are seeing that about 65% of the public seems not to trust the judicial You're system. You're referring to the Afrobarometer report. Afrobarometer report mm. says that. And it is worrying because this is an institution that is our last resort. So if today the Supreme Court is saying that we need to go and interpret our constitution, it's worrying because it's in black and white. Look, yes, now, but yesterday in, in I just tried fairness, to practice a lot, of, a lot of provisions in the constitution are brought for interpretation all the time. This is not the first time. Nah. Even though it's in black and white, sometimes if two or more people infer different meanings to a provision in the constitution, then one of them or all of them can come to the Supreme Court seeking interpretation. And it's something that we have been told happens often. 
This is not the first time. So, so it's not out of place. So we are saying that the Constitution, the 97 clause 1, G and H, yes. it's not clear. Look now, to be frank, we are all just um, to be pretending. And it's so sad. When the Supreme Court, the highest court in our land, seems to be playing some kind of gimmick. Because look, yesterday, I just tried to see if it's true that the Constitution is really not clear. And so the MPP leader wants Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution. So I gave the Constitution to my JHS child to read that clause and tell me what she understands about it. What did she say? You will be so amazed. She said to read it. You will be so amazed. I you know at a point I wanted to record whatever she was saying and then let it be played for people to hear. This is a JJ. She said exactly what we are saying that All right. it is clear that the constitution and for that matter that clause is not referring to a futuristic it's not ambiguous. As we are saying, okay. it is not ambiguous. All right. And it's so sad when the Supreme Court is saying that if these seats are declared vacant, we deny people or the constituents of those constituencies representation. What happened to Sarah? Are we saying that the four seats are more important than people who have not been represented for the past four years? And Supreme Court have not seen anything with it. Let when me read what the Chief Justice said. She said, 